Which throne star was once Hermione Granger's mom? Who did not know their name until he was 11 years old? And who started their career as a porn star? Here are the stories of the Game of Thrones stars before they became famous in Westeros. Corey here, and you're watching the OSA channel. So we start with Kit Harington. Kit, well actually Christopher, but even the star himself did not know that fact until he was 11. Apparently the wildling was damn right about the actor when she said, You know nothing, Jon Snow. It all became clear during his exams at school. The boy put down Kit Harington as his signature out of habit. The teacher told him to rewrite it to his real name. Of course the actor was pissed off saying, yeah, I think I know my own name. But the teacher insisted that he was wrong and his real name is Christopher. The poor boy was confused and he made a real scene at home, accusing his mom of forgetting to mention his real name to him. Harrington landed his first major role on the London stage in the drama War Horse. After that, Harrington auditioned for his most famous part to date. Back then, Kit looked a little rough around the edges when he first tried out for the bastard son of Lord Eddard Stark. Harrington told the Daily Mail that during his audition he had a black eye as he had been in a scrap. But according to Kit, the black eye might have helped him as it made the producers remember him. You know, like, hey, uh, who's the kid with the black eye? Yeah, let, let's think about him for a while now. He did win the part, as we know, but after the famous failed pilot, Harrington was asked to change his look a lot. The producers asked him to grow his hair and a beard and skip shampoo to make him look a bit dirtier and grubbier and more visceral. And that's how Jon Snow became the man we know today. Much of his journey of being a famous bastard has been brilliant, but there have been some challenges. Harrington is still recovering from the burnout of last year's workload. There was a scary moment on the set when he was temporarily paralyzed. I was in my trailer and I felt absolutely fine, but they called me to set. I got up and my legs just went out from underneath me and I fucking couldn't stand, says Harrington. The actor was shocked. He had to stay in bed for 48 hours and only then could he continue to work again. I've got to say, it is not easy to be a GOT actor and Amelia Clark is the one who knows that for sure. Before she earned the longest on-screen name ever, Amelia, Isabel, Euphemia, Rose, Clark. Oh, I guess that's why it's so easy for her to remember all the titles of Daenerys. Anyways, before becoming an actress, Clark, like many others, took a gap year after secondary school. The girl worked as a waitress and went backpacking in Asia. After graduation from drama school, she set herself a goal. For one year, take only roles with some promise. It was a real challenge for her. She made the rent by working in a pub, a call center, and an obscure museum, telling people that the loser over there. Seconds felt like days for her, but she was as determined as Khaleesi. One year of no bad productions, no place above the bar. Justice prevailed, and finally her agent called her about auditions for a new HBO series. Actually, for the part of Daenerys. Producers were eager to find an otherworldly, bleach blonde woman of mystery. And there stood Amelia, a short, dark-haired, curvy Brit. But whatever, she decided the shot was worth taking and I could not agree more. And so, when the auditions were over, Amelia felt like she was not perfect enough for the role of the princess and blurted out, can I do anything else? And GOT's author, David Benioff, was like, uh, you could do a dance. She figured she had nothing to lose and did the funky chicken and the robot. Perhaps this was not the worst idea as right when Clark left the auditorium, they ran after her and said, Congratulations, princess. And that's how the legendary unburnt Daenerys of the House Targaryen was born. Her childish dreams came true. The first season quickly brought her international fame and unfortunately, two aneurysms. Yes, shockingly, the actress survived two life-threatening surgeries during the show and kept it a secret for eight years. The notoriously private mother of the dragons took the occasion of the GOT ending to finally open up about her dire medical emergency. Fortunately, she is now fine, but the horrors she lived through definitely changed her attitude towards life. If you want to know more about this story, you can watch our video right here. And now we'll go on with Peter Dinklage. Sure, you recognize him as Tyrion Lannister, but once he was forced to literally live with rats and was a heck of a leather jacket type badass. Before he made it as an actor, Dinklage used to play in a self-described punk funk rap band called Wizzy. They even played at the legendary New York club CBGB's. And the surprises do not stop there. As Dinklage revealed, the band didn't care much at all about personal safety. They were often smoking and drinking during their shows. And one time, the bass player fell off the back of his amp because he passed out. By the way, Peter still bears the scar that runs from his neck to his eyebrows from that energetic performance. Yes, he was that tough, ladies and gentlemen. Just like his co-star Clark, Dinklage also refused to play shitty roles. Dwarves are still the butt of the joke. It's one of the last bastions of acceptable prejudice, Peter said in an interview. The lack of decent roles forced Peter and some friends 
to share an apartment under a bridge, which didn't have heat, because the furnace was filled with rats. The only solution they could afford back then was a cat, and that's not a joke. Peter did buy a cat for that specific reason. Fortunately, Dinklage did eventually earn coveted roles in films like Oblivion, The Station Agent, and of course, X-Men. And after 2011 brought Dinklage one of his most iconic roles ever, the actor should not be afraid to going back to living with rats ever again. By the way, do you remember Shay? Tyrion's dearly beloved, who actually betrayed her former lover at the trial? Well, she paid her debts, as we remember. Before Game of Thrones, the actress Sabal Kikali, Kekali, Kikali, Kinkali, Ah, eh, whatever. She made porn, but there's much more. She has won two Lola Awards, the equivalent of an Oscar, for performances in German cinema. I'm not messing with you. Apart from that, Sabal briefly starred in features of a more adult nature under the stage name Delara. If you Google her pictures from that time, which of course I did not, the actress did look a bit different as it was before her nose surgery. Still though, it's definitely her. Let's check on another hot lady from the GOT team, and it will be Lena Headey. Describing herself as rebellious in her youth, Hedy intended to become a hairdresser. Yeah, rebellious as hell. However, she also developed a love for movies and musicals and became involved in acting as a student at Shelley College. From then on, Hedy occasionally received some minor parts and the most memorable was in the action blockbuster 300. Seems that's where she learned how to be a formidable matriarch, playing the role of Sparta's queen Gorgo. Lena has also starred in the Sarah Connor Chronicles for the Terminator's TV run in 2008. By the way, her co-star, Emilia Clarke, also starred in this franchise seven years later in Terminator Genesis. Despite Lena's successful parts in popular films, Hedy has been open about her longtime struggles with clinical depression. To overcome that, Lena found her own way out in an obsession with tattoos. Lena told Esquire that she loves tattoos and finds it calming. She sported several delicate ink depictions across her arms, shoulders, and back. I bet the makeup artist had a lot of work hiding all those tattoos for Cersei's famous shame walk. Shame! Shame! Who knows how big her tattoo obsession would have become if her old friend Peter Dinklage did not introduce her to the role of the Queen Regent Cersei Lannister. Her onstage brother and forbidden lover, Jamie Lannister, is the one we will go with. In the days before the HBO's fantasy hits, Nikolai Coster Waldo was already a busy actor working in a rather surprising list of credits in the UK, US, and his native Denmark. In his mid-twenties, a young Nikolai made his feature film debut in the Danish thriller Nightwatch. That would be another 20 years before he'd become Jamie Lannister. Since then, he had played dozens of roles and managed to build a strong marriage with Nukaka, an actress and singer from Greenland. It is surprising that Nikolai joined the GOT team at all, as the actor revealed that he's too much of a scaredy cat to make it through an entire horror movie. And as we know, Westeros is full of horrors. I bet some of the GOT scenes made him really nervous. For instance, the actor himself admitted that there was one GOT death that particularly shook him the most. He revealed, the little princess that was burned in season five, I thought that was horrible. There's a lot of horrible things that happened in the show, but that moment was gut-wrenching. Poor guy. Anyhow, we should move on to another actress whose character was also killed in a very scary way. And I'm talking about Caitlin Stark. As it turns out, the actress Michelle Fairley has previously portrayed the part of Hermione Granger's mom. Before she was the ill-fated Caitlin Stark, Fairley appeared as Hermione's muggle mother in 2010's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. In fact, she replaced Heather Bleasdale, who had played the part eight years earlier in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Apart from that, Fairley appeared in a number of British television shows, including The Bill, Holby City, and Casualty. But nothing seemed to bring her much popularity before she became the Stark family matriarch. One more star of Game of Thrones is connected to Harry Potter as well. Well, to Daniel Radcliffe, in fact. It is Alfie Allen, whom we know as Theon Greyjoy. Before he lost his dignity, and much, much more, at the hands of the vicious Ramsay Bolton, Theon Greyjoy got it all out on stage. Allen replaced Daniel Radcliffe as the lead in Ikis. Yes, the one with the horses and the notorious nude scene. He was presumably unconcerned about embarrassment, having previously starred in Agent Cody Banks 2, Destination London. Originally auditioning for the part of Jon Snow, Alan came to international attention when he was cast as Theon Greyjoy. Honestly, to me, it's even hard to imagine him as Jon Snow alongside Khaleesi. Thank God we got Kit. One More Star has an interesting pre-GOT story. And I'm talking about Karis Van Uten, who played the role of Melisandre. As it turns out, 
Westeros is packed full of musical talent. Ivan Rion, who plays Ramsay Bolton, for instance, Jeremy Flynn, who plays Braun as a famous singer, and you already know about Peter Dinklage's band. No wonder the Coldplay frontman Chris Martin made a funny mini musical with the actors of the show. But let's people know that Karis Van Uten has a pure musical talent as well. Before Game of Thrones, the actress released a pop rock album, See You on the Ice, and it's actually pretty good. Perhaps we'll see a bit of her musical talent in the season finale. That would definitely be a surprise. But what are your predictions about the season finale? Don't forget to share them with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Corey out.